Screamtail, an ancient version of Jigglypuff, is one of the paradox forms that unfortunately dropped down to UU in competitive singles. Despite its great defensive stats and speed, the fact that it's one of the only usable Pokemon with access to Wish, and a great support move pool, with options like Stealth Rock, Encore, and Thunder Wave, as well as Calm Mind and a solid selection of special attacks, the high power level of Generation 9 has not been kind to Screamtail so far. Especially defensive Pokemon, weak to both Steel and Ghost, in a meta where Goldengo reigns supreme, is unfortunate, but you can run teammates to support you in these matchups. The biggest problem with Screamtail really has been its poor matchup against Chi Yu, who was formerly the most popular special attacker in the game. This Pokemon could brute force through Screamtail with its massive stab damage very easily. But now that Chi Yu has been banned, along with Annihilate, who put a strain on team building, and Cyclozar, who enabled some fast-paced offensive structures, maybe Screamtail is worth revisiting in OU. Many Pokemon in Gen 9 have fantastic bulk, but lack a form of immediate healing, making Wish a desirable support option. Could Screamtail finally live up to its potential now? Jim Cool, the team doctor, is here to find out. Tier 2 patron Ash submitted this team for me to take a look at and make adjustments to. If you'd like to send me a team to feature in a video, take a look at my Patreon link in the description for more information. Thank you to Ash for the support. So here's the team that Ash submitted to me that he wanted me to take a look at. And the idea is simple. We've got the Wish Passing Screamtail. It's kind of a balanced team built around Screamtail where we have Wish support alongside really bulky Pokemon that can't heal themselves. You give them a way to heal with Wish. Tinglu is the most obvious premier example. It has massive bulk. It's the kind of the defensive king of the generation. But it has no form of immediate healing. It has rest, but rest sets aren't very good. It leaves you vulnerable. Rest talk is too many move slots. So I really like Wish alongside Tinglu. Add longevity to this insane wall. And Rotom Wash is honestly a nice thing to have Wish support for too. Another really good defensive Pokemon in the metagame without a form of immediate healing. Unless you want to run Rest and like Chesto Berry. Not ideal. You want Protect Leftovers Chip. You want, you know, other stuff. And honestly, Assault Vest Great Tusk is another fantastic Wish receiver here. We have Donkey Kong trapped inside of a pyramid along with uh, Skeledurge. At a glance, I thought this team looked uh, perfectly fine. I thought it looked good. But uh, I, I played a few games to test it out, and I wasn't able to win any games. It had a lot of issues, this team. One of the big issues was a poor matchup against Meowskarada, who I've been seeing a lot more of recently for whatever reason. I don't know what's up with that. Meowskarada rising in popularity. It's bad to have, you know, a Pokemon that kind of kind of tear you apart like that. I mean, look at this team. This is weak to Flower Trick. This kind of gets nuked by Flower Trick knockoff. This is obviously dead to Flower Trick. This gets knocked off. This is dead to Flower Trick. This is dead to Flower Trick. So, my first idea was, what about uh, Scizor? Scizor, in my mind, is the best counter to Meow. You, and a generally good, like, pivot that works on this kind of style. It appreciates wish support. I thought that that was a logical addition. Plus, it gives you a little bit of offensive firepower, a prio move, which is always nice. Scizor's good in Gen 9. I thought it would be a good fit. And in my experience, I actually found that Garganical couldn't really get going with the Iron Head Body Press stuff and was kind of very passive and easy to punish and also conflicts a little bit with Skeledurge, who is kind of your prime Terra user. And then you also want to Terra Water on Garg. So I think it's generally better to run like one big Terra Abuser. You can always do backup Terras whenever you need, but... There's kind of like one main guy you're going to tear on most games. Garganical is a Pokemon that is like, on, on most teams that run it, it is the main guy that wants to use Terra. So I thought uh, a simple Goldengo would help a lot with this team. This is a hazard stacking team. We have Stealth Rock Spikes. To get more out of Tinglu, I think you want a Goldengo. And I also think that what the Goldengo does is kind of cross over with Garganical's role of being the switch in against status moves like Amoongus Spore, Breloom Spore, stuff like that. And I think that this is really good synergy with the Thunder Wave Hex set on Smogon with the defensive Goldengo, not only because you're a more balance-oriented team, but you have this Pokemon here who is spreading status and has also has Hex. So you have two Hex abusers, two different ways to spread status against two different, you know, types of Pokemon. You can Thunder Wave things that are immune to burn, and burn can hit things that are immune to Thunder Wave, so you can spread status more. And I thought that Terra Flying would be good because it helps you 
live in EQ and finish off a low great tusk so that their form of hazard removal is gone forever. It lets you be neutral to ghost and dark type attacks incoming. It's a generally good defensive type and because your previous typing resists rock and there's not a lot of electric types in OU, it's, it feels even better. If you like, you can run boots on this because it enhances the flying terror a little bit more when you terror flying, you become weak to, weak to rock. So it's nice to not only like, is this generally a useful item, but yeah, it's even better post terror. So I tried this version of the team. I made a couple other minor alterations. I went with Ruination here and we can run Stealth Rock on the Screamtail instead. I find that on the Parish Song set with, with Screamtail, one of my favorite things about it is that it can come in versus Garganical pretty nicely and not be too threatened. You kind of don't care too much about the Salt Cure damage and Iron Head Body... Iron Defense Body Press is not threatening at all versus you when you times 4 resist fighting. You can Perish Song to force them out. And then while they're Perish Songed, something that I like about Perish Song is that it gives you turns to use Wish or Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is something to do while the Perish turns are ticking down. And it kind of lets you get a bit of momentum back. You force them to switch out and then you can do stuff. Either Wish, they go somewhere and then you can heal a guy up. It kind of allows more opportunities to get Wishes off. And then with that reliable way to get Stealth Rock up, you have Goldie to block them from ever removing the hazards. So let me show you what happened here. Funnily enough, we, we got the Meowskarada matchup to test if we're any better. And what I soon realized is that uh, on this team now, there is no form of ground immunity or water resistance because we no longer have Rotom Wash. So something like Quackoval is looking very threatening. Even a Clodsire Earthquake is not the greatest thing in the world for us. So I protect to see what he does. I think that that's a good thing to do versus Meow. See what they're locked into. Plus it forces them to use their... Uh, one-time protein and then you can re react after that. I find that Ting Lu doesn't mind getting a scarf tricked onto it because uh, most of the time you're clicking spikes which is a spammable move anyway or you just click an earthquake which is another fine thing to be locked into and then exit. You probably just click one attack and then exit most of the time with Ting Lu anyway. It's not as devastating as say being tricked a scarf onto like Skeledurge or Screamtail. So I, I don't mind just going straight into Goldie, even though that that's a little bit of a disadvantage, it's fine. And we're getting, th this is where immediately, you know, with the Goldie, the spike is now permanent. He has no way, real way to remove it. Corviknight is his only form of hazard removal. And this is a team without great task, which is, I think, the reason why we, we ended up winning this game. This is why I like the Terra Flying Goldie here. We T-wave this Meow, it's now crippled for the remainder of the game. We dodge the knockoff and now we can easily heal back up. I thought the Terra Flying Goldie was much more worthwhile in this matchup where they have a Clod Sire and we don't really need a Fairy typing on Skeledurge in this particular matchup. There's no Dragonite or any physical threat that we have to deal with. We're just kind of slowly making progress in this game. We knock something off. Tinglu is pretty free against Goldie. The only thing that uh, threatens Tinglu with Goldie is uh, Focus Blast, which is inaccurate and they kind of have to Terra terror uh fighting to actually nuke you properly it does help to have both ting lu and the av great tusk on the team to handle to handle that along with uh if they happen to be scarf and lock into a terror terror fighting focus blast we have scream tail is good for that lock in as well and so skeledurge and yeah another free spike situation every time he goes goldie we get ting lu in make a spike he can't remove it this is you know immediately enhancing the team here so i just go for a a T-Wave on this Quack. And here I made a misplay. I assumed I'd be faster than this Quack. He was actually a bit faster. I checked afterwards. He's about 220 speed. And this fully defensive Goldie is only 204 speed or something like that. So I unfortunately lost Goldie now. Which is kind of a misplay. I should have just gone to Scizor. But didn't know the numbers on that one. First time using such a Goldie set. We get bailed out a little bit here with this, this good luck. And we go Ting Lu on the Goldie again. This time I just clicked Earthquake, don't want to screw around, let Goldie sweep everything. And it's dead to the spikes next time it comes in, so if we can apply pressure to, to Corviknight, which I failed to do here, but oddly enough he didn't go for Defog, I think that was a misplay, I think you should Defog there, save your Goldango, but my opponent thought, thought otherwise. I mean, I made a misplay in the same game, so I can't be calling the pot black as the kettle or whatever the saying goes that's not how it goes and he ends up having to sack goldengo which is nice for us 
skip ahead a little bit. Here's the Screamtail. You know, just... I don't mind getting toxic on Screamtail in this situation. I don't need to, like, sit and heal over and over with Screamtail. I'm using it to make rocks and then, you know, perish the Claude so I can do something else. Maybe wish something up in a moment. Wish is nice backup, too. It lets you get something in safely without worrying about whatever. He clears my rock. I don't really need the hazards at this point of the game. We get a burn on this for it's a bit of progress. Pretty boring endgame here. We're, we're just slowly making the progress. This is kind of why this kind of team style can be a bit boring to play. But we knock off the Rotom lefties, which means now Burn is actually slowly killing the guy. So we can, you know, wish protect a bunch of times. Do a bit of this. I go Skeletor Dodge here. And then I just take the pump to kill it. The Great Tusk eventually cleans it up. So, kind of an... This is not really a very typical team, but these are Pokemon you do see. So, it was an interesting one, but I, I noticed issues with the team. I'm very lucky to not have played against a Great Tusk, because that would have been a problem for us. Like, we don't have a ground immunity. So, after that game, realizing that we had issues versus ground types and water types, I brought back the Rotom Wash. I think that we do need it. As much as Scizor is nice, I think that the Levitate plus water typing is just too valuable. Also, this is a great Wish Receiver and Will-O-Wisp. Synergizes with these Hex users. So that's very great teammate here. The other change I made was changing the Great Tusk into an Iron Treads. This, I think, is a little bit better because Iron Treads at least is neutral to Grass, which we kind of need to be at least neutral to on something. We still have a little bit of a problem versus Meow, but I think it's manageable. Meow is not like something that's so central that you need to have a hard counter. Scizor would maybe fit on some different version of this team, but I think that with Iron Treads, we can handle it well enough, probably. Yeah, Terra Flying Goldie, that last game, was a very good option against it. I think that just going with that in a game where you see Meow will probably be okay, especially if you can lure them to stay in and then Thunder Wave them. Then they're gone, they're crippled, just like what happened last game. So, And then at least we're not getting one hit by the thing on our Iron Treads. The EV spread, I went with 301 speed, which outruns uh, enemy, uh, enemy max speed Great Tusk. It outruns Glamora, and it outruns Goldango, which are the three most important things. And then I wanted to have some special defense to enhance the Assault Vest more, so... I think that I'm happy with this version of the team. We can see it in action here. Against what I think looks like a pretty damn meta team. Chen Pao Korv, Garganical, Great Tusk... Goldie Dragonite. Pretty nice uh, team to practice against to see how we stack up. So let's take a look. Once again, go straight to Ting Lu against the Goldie. No worries if we get tricked. We can get the hazards up anyway. We spike up and then... This is what's nice is that... Um, there's always the gamers who want to target Goldengo. He probably thought I was going to Goldengo to block Rapid Spin. Which I was not. Uh, so it, it puts them in an awkward situation when you have both Rotom Wash and Goldie. They're like, do we do I try to hit Rotom Wash? Do I try to hit Goldie? Usually knockoff is the mid ground, you see. But what's nice is that if they try to rapid spin, and in this case he tried to knock off, you have a free turn to just pump the guy, which chips it down. And now you have like won this exchange for sure. If they waste the turn spinning and take all that health, the Great Tusk has limited health. This is a situation where you can kind of force them into spinning and taking a pump or keep your spike up. It's kind of like putting them between a rock and a hard place. So that's why I really like Rotom Wash in the metagame in general right now. Sorry, the spike is not showing up on Showdown. Bit of a visual glitch, but there is a spike up. And Pump just got a lot of chip damage on Goldango. Pump generally a hard move to switch into. Even on this squad, there's like no... Usually the best switch in is like an enemy Rotom Wash who doesn't want to get Will-O-Wisped or anything, so... Love Rotom Wash. Tinglu comes back in and gets another spike, which is more progress. Tusk is low, looking great for the prospect of the hazard game, folks. This is just classic, classic moment. We're forcing switches with with hazards up, and I just go Rotom Wash against this Dragonite because I can just click Will O Wisp, and he's forced out. Yeah, he doesn't want to get Will O Wisp. No worries. I've, I've chipped this Garganic a little bit now. And... 
this is an example of what I was talking about, where Screamtail can come in against Garganical and not be too threatened. We're taking a bit of chip from the from the salt kill, but now we're getting rocks up. Yeah, they're getting rocks up, but we have an AV Iron Treads who matches up really well versus their Goldengo. If they try to, they can't really block Rapid Spin very nicely. We outrun this guy. It's lost its scarf. It's low. It's taking rock and spike next time it comes in. We're probably going to get a, get a spin off this game. And I can perish it in case it tries to do any nonsense. Now I can get Iron Treads in and not worry about taking a Salt Cure. Or if I am worried about taking a Salt Cure, no worries. Because this thing is on a clock. It has to get out of there. And in comes this. We, we Vault, which is another nice tool to have for some pivoting. Just back to Goldie. And we block the Defog. I clicked Hex because I thought he might um, switch straight to Great Tusk for some reason or go to Garganical to play around Thunder Wave. But that was kind of bad because um, this is not a standard common Goldie set. Although I have revealed Hex, haven't I? I guess revealing Hex gives away that I would have a status move. Never mind. So I thought he might play around the status move, but he didn't. That's fine. I mean, honestly, that chip against Corviknight is also super good. That 29% chip. This is the defogger, so we love to chip that thing down, obviously. In comes Chan Pao. I could have committed to Terra flying there to dodge the crunch and then T wave this. That's a valid play, but I didn't want to do it. I was pretty sure he's going to crunch. The fact he's taken the rocks and spikes means he's probably choice banned. Because otherwise they run boots on this, so choice banned it probably is. So we just take the crunch on the Tinglu and then. I went for an Earthquake because I thought that he might go here to try and... I've spiked every other time. I thought he might think, oh, he's going to spike and be locked in. I can actually get a spin or take out Goldie. I just Earthquake and now Tusk is gone. So we he can no longer get rid of these Hazards because Corviknight gets too owned by Goldie. And this is, you know, a lot of people struggle with Garganical. This is kind of how you beat it. You just establish your Hazards and... Now it's under too much pressure. Every defensive switch to Garganical is more and more dangerous. And I just went for an Earthquake just to chip the damn guy. And now it's dead after the after the hazards. Slight optim optimization is uh, I click Knockoff. Because that also kills Garganical. And does a bit more chip damage to the Corviknight as well. And then I clicked... I think Volt Switch, yeah. I want to save this Iron Treads as a sack later. And this Goldie is now dead to the next Rock and Spike, I think. I just click EQ because even if D-Knight comes in, I have so many ways to respond. we got the free sack to pivot into Skeledurge for free. And now we can Terra Fairy. That's the reason I didn't really want to commit to Terra Flying in the matchup, because Terra Fairy is what you want versus Dragonite. It completely it completely beats it. My mistake. He does live on 2%, but yeah, not long for this world at all. We just bring Ting Lu back in and one more Earthquake and it's over. And now that Goldie's dead, uh, we can just sack Ting Lu and be fine. We, yeah, have a... He forfeits because we have a Skeletor Dirge of Terra Fairy that handles his Dragonite and everything else is just going to die slowly. So that was a pretty textbook game for the, whatever this style is trying to do. Make spikes, spread hazards, wish up your fellows. I didn't actually use wish here, but the Screamtail still did stuff. It helps versus Garganical. It's a really safe way to... to you know, Garganical can really be an annoying guy that is like impossible to switch into and it keeps making progress with all this Salt Cure chip, but... You can force it out while making Stealth Rock, and then your Stealth Rock stick because you have Goldie and all these guys that threaten like enemy Great Tusk with Rotom. And yeah, this is a pretty perfect example of the team in action. And then I played one more game against a very aggressive team here with uh, a bunch of setup guys: a Breloom, a Volk, a King Gambit, Great Tusk, Goldie. So this is a this is was a game where you know every turn I was kind of important. Because there was this offensive fella to find in the pace. I just pump in the face of the Tusk. He's happy to sack just to get rocks on the field, which he thinks he needs. That's fair. I go Goldie here. 
on the Breller. And we, we take a big Terragross Bullet Seed, but full defense Goldie can shrug that off. And he unfortunately didn't get any um, didn't get any more multi-hits. That could have killed if he got more multi-hits. We get the T-Wave off, and, and now we can just recover back up. And Hex takes it out. Very clean KO against that uh, Breller. I go Tinglu versus the King Gambit. We can use our enormous bulk to shrug off either a Dark move or even an Iron Head Stab move. And I... I whirlwind it. I thought he might Swords Dance or King Gambit can Terra flying there and Swords Dance randomly, so I just whirlwinded. And honestly, whirlwinding this in as a free turn now to make a hazard. So that's kind of nice. The whirlwind just for a bit of disruption. If you get like a good outcome, like the Goldie comes in and now he has to switch out because obviously he can't stay versus this. Uh, free spike. Can't complain. The reason I made a spike was because it's a bit more damage versus Goldengo and King Gambit where. Volcarona for sure has boots, so there's no point making rocks. But a single spike actually does more to, to these steel types than a stealth rock. So that was slightly better to make a... Actually, I don't even have stealth rock, sorry. But if I did have stealth rock, spike is still better there. Just, just a little tip for people. If you see a, a situation like this where they have two rock resists and something that probably has boots, it's better to spike. Just for your info. That was actually wrong because I don't have stealth rock. But still, the fundamental idea still stands there. And I get some chip peel with this Goldie. And now he reveals that he's Scarf and he's locked into Trick. So I can just... This is a situation where like Screamtail isn't that useful in this matchup. Because this is not a matchup that's going to go for ages where I need Wish support and stuff. This is a offensive team that's going to peter out. Lose Steam shortly. So I make the decision to go to Screamtail and just get my Rock up. And then sack myself. And... He made the play of Nasty Plotting here because I am locked into Stealth Rock, which was a good play. Now he can get a bit more damage versus my Ting Lu, but that's fine because I still take it out with my bulk. Fairly easy. Azu's taken rocks and spikes now. With EQ, he's got the Citrus Berry. I sack Screamtail. Safer way to go about it in case he play roughs the Rotom or something. He goes for the Belly Drum, which I did kind of expect, and here I can freely Chip Hill once because they're there's no other way for him to boost again. Get free health. And then I live the Aqua Jet. Full defense Rotom. We handle that. And I just go to Iron Treads. And then I go to Skeledurge reactively. Skeledurge really destroys Volcarona in its base typing. So if you see Volcarona, you don't want to Terra Fairy with Skeledurge, actually. You want to cape Skeledurge in its base typing. Because you resist fire and grass. And nothing can really hit you that Volcarona can do. Like nothing. And then... You have probably uh, special defense investment. So yeah, he's forced to sack Goldie here. Get King Gambit in. I just sack Rotom. Plenty of stuff to sack to safely get in. We go Ting Lu. We can get a free Earthquake. But we did get um, flinched. So that's fine. Iron Treads can just come in an Earthquake. I use Terra Ground because... I don't need to Terra anywhere else. We're not going to Terra with the Skeletor Dirge. Terra Flying does nothing for us, so... I just Terra Ground for more damage versus the Volcarona coming in. And then... Actually, there's Will-O-Wisp, which also does nothing to us, so... Dirge safely spams Torch Song, and we obviously cannot lose here, folks. Here comes Treads for the victory. So, yeah, pretty... Pretty good-looking offensive team. Azumarill is a bit atypical, but it's still... Kind of a good Pokemon in the meta. It's it's threatening. It's it's typing is nice versus like Chen Pao. It's got merit to it. So I think that was a good showing for the team. And I'm happy with the with the result here. I think some of the terrors you could optimize. The Terra Ground feels good on this. For, for that situation, it was nice. Uh, this is also Terra Ground. I think like Terra Fairy might be the way. But we already have a Terra Fairy Dirge. Maybe Terra Ground is a bit nicer. You can figure it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will be fine. Thank you for the submission. Hope you enjoyed where I went with the team. I thought I'd show one iteration before I left on the final team to show you my process a little bit. I'll, I'll try this team a little bit more on the ladder. Thank you for the submission from Ash. Tier 2 patron in the Pokemaniac section. Pokemaniacs, you guys haven't submitted any teams to me. You guys are free to do so. And if you guys become patrons, you can also submit teams for me to look at. 
Thank you very much for the support, everybody. Check out these recommended vids. Whatever they may be. And, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, etc. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'll see ya. Hope you enjoyed this new style of Team Doctor thing I'm trying out. Goodbye.